What's up everybody, Susanna Collins alongside Andrew Wiebe and Kaylin Carr. Barco Watch officially over at Atlanta United, finalizing a blockbuster transfer to obtain the 18-year-old Argentinian Ezekiel Barco from Club Independiente. And when I say blockbuster, you guys, I mean it. I am not joking around. We are talking eight figures here. Ooh. This is unprecedented. That's it a is. lot of money. Yes, this is a record in Major League Soccer. And we fought it for the last month, and it's been one of those things. Will it, won't it get done? And eventually Atlanta United got this thing on the finish line, and their fans are ecstatic. But when you look at this move in context of the rest of the league, this has never been done before, and for good reason. They've blown it out of the water two years in a row. Miguel Miron last year, Ezekiel Barco this year. Not only that, not only eight figures, not only that sell-on, not only a deal in which Barca, Zenit, Benfica were rumored to be in it. He's 18 years old. He's the next big thing in South America, Kalen. This kid has a huge future, and it starts after Independiente in MLS. Well, that's the big number to me, 18. You've seen MLS clubs go out and spend um, a lot of money, but usually on older stars, big names. Atlanta United came into the league last year, changed the game, bringing in some younger names, younger faces like Miguel Amiron. Now you see the rumored fees that are coming in for him. Now this one is the next step where it goes even younger. And as you mentioned, Andrew, uh, the clubs that are after him, Zenit, uh, Tottenham, big name clubs abroad. And now when you're uh, one of those scouting directors, you look down the field in Argentina and you see Carlos Bocanegra with that blank check yeah. <laughs> uh, sitting there. You're we like, might get outbid. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a new era for MLS. It is not a new era, though, I want to make this clear, of bringing in young South American talent. Sure. That's happened for a long time. And you look at Lane United, they've just increased the investment across the league. The Tomas Martinez's, Carlos Guerrezo's, Lucia Costa's, Artur, Christian Coleman. I mean, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. But they're the ones who are saying, you know what? This is an investment. We're willing to spend eight figures because maybe at the end of this, we've got to sell on it. Okay, so this leads me to my next question. When you look at the model that Atlanta United has sort of established here, it's, it's, they're changing the landscape mm -hmm. of the league. What does it mean for the rest of the league, the other teams? Well, this is sort of a perfect storm in Atlanta United. I mean, it starts for me with Tata Martino. You know, to have a coach with that type of credibility, pedigree, to be able to go down to South America and say, hey, look, I've coached the best. I, I, can, I can take you here. Look what I've done here. And then the next step and the inevitable question is, who eventually leaves? Will Almiron end up being sold in the summer? Or will Arthur Blank say, hey, this isn't too much money for me. We can keep doing this. The value of these players continues to increase. The interest is still there. Let's mm -hmm. go for the championship and hold on to them. But uh, I, I don't think that this is something that, is necessarily replicable at every club because this type of money, uh, you know, 72,000, you're filling the stadium casually in Atlanta. <laughs> it's not necessarily replicable. Other clubs will still have to build through the academy system, uh, through the homegrowns, and find other ways in other markets. But it is special to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Clubs are going to follow, though. Diego Rossi, LAFC, that's a guy to look at this year. You're looking mm -hmm. at Jesus Medina, New York City FC. Clubs are spending money. It may not be in the eight-figure range, but South America, that is a huge market for MLS right now. All right, so my next question. We look at this Atlanta United attack now with the addition of Barco. Is this the most potent attack in the league? How does it all come together? It is the most dynamic young attack. Is it the most potent attack? They'll have to prove it in 2018, Susanna. But you look at Joseph Martinez. Basically played half the year last year and almost won the golden boot. Hector Vialba, I think maybe the most underrated attacker in this league. Mm -hmm. And Yamil Assad was the fourth of the four horsemen, but he had like seven and 13. If you look at Barco, Two good feet, can play second striker, can play the 10, can play the left wing or the right wing. He's so versatile. This team on the break, I think, into the season, 60-plus goals, I think they'll be the most explosive attack in the league. It's crazy. Well, they already were last year, and it's crazy to think that this team may actually be better in the attack. And they have more pieces, more dynamic pieces. Barco, I'm not convinced, is going to be a left winger. I could see him playing in the middle of the field. Uh, you should also mention Darlington Nagby, yeah. who's come across. <laughs> and I think with Barco and Nagby, the thing that changes its attack the most is now you have two guys that enjoy the ball at their feet. You know, Before, it was just get out, run and gun as quick as possible. But when teams sat back and defended against them and that first you couldn't break that first line now they have two guys that like the ball at their feed can break guys down one-on-one -on -one. Uh, I think that's the different part of this attack that you'll see this year as opposed to last and the story they're gonna be fun to yes, watch this season you guys keep track of all the transfer moves on MLSsoccer.com also go to our YouTube page like subscribe all of that thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time